So guys, I definitely feel like we can all agree that this season specifically for college basketball, at least for the freshmen this season, bro, it just hasn't been like how most people imagine. And if you look at the top players entering as freshmen this season at the top of the 2023 class, a lot of these guys, bro, they just have not been performing like how most people thought. And you guys know, bro, typically freshmen, those guys usually dominate the top five to 10 picks in most NBA drafts. But there's only been two players in this top 10 that are still projected to be top picks in this up and coming 2024 NBA draft. And those two guys are actually Cody Williams and Jacoby Walters. However, there's still a lot of guys that are definitely doing their things. And there's a lot of guys that I feel like that's been surprising. And there's even some guys that I feel like has even exceeded expectations out there. And I say all that to say that in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the best freshmen. We're also going to be taking a look at the worst freshmen. Talk about some guys that maybe it's time to give up on or they're probably going to be for your guys and talk about the main one and done players in this draft so let me know down below if you guys agree with my list i also want to know who do you guys personally feel like is the best freshman so far this season who's been the worst and the most underwhelming so comment down below get in the comment section like the video subscribe to the channel thank you guys for 30k and let's get straight on to this video so guys, boom, it's gonna get straight into this video. And I feel like it's only right to really start off with the player that really had the highest expectations coming into the season and a player that actually finished number one in the high school class as well. And guys, we have to talk about this man um, from UNC, Isaiah Kohler. Now, now I feel like at this point, 20 plus games into the season, I definitely feel like we can all agree that this man Isaiah Kohler just hasn't been the player that we all imagined that he would be. It's kind of crazy because a lot of people actually had this guy as the number one projected pick. However, I feel like due to his inability to just take care of the ball averaging over three turnovers a game compared to his four assist a game numbers and then his inability to just be a threat from the three-point line and I know although he can attack the rim and he's a great rim penetrator the fact that he's just not a great free throw shooter only shooting 66% from the field it's really just caused a lot of NBA scouts to just have a lot of questions about his game right now it looks like Isaiah Kohler is still projected to go somewhere in the 13s and the 20s um, but for this season I'll definitely give Isaiah Kohler a B minus I'm still a believer but like I said just hasn't been the player that we thought he was going to be now DJ Wagner is another player that I feel like had high expectations coming into this season he finished high school as a top five player in the 23 class and he was also expected to be a one and done player and I do think he still will probably be a one and done player but he looks like a guy that's going to be getting drafted somewhere in the second round but if you guys remember before the season even started he was the consensus top five to seven pick in the in the 24 draft but I feel like due to his struggles at Kentucky just not being the best three point range type of shooter just not really showcasing that he can create for teammates especially in the half court setting and just his inconsistency to just score the ball each night like I said it's really just made scouts just kind of lose trust in his game but nonetheless his ability to attack the rim be a great rim penetrator and also just his hustle and tenacity and his energy that he brings each night is definitely at the top of his class but for this specific season at Kentucky I'll definitely give DJ Wagner right now a B minus or a C plus now let's talk about this man Jeremy McCain he's a player that I feel like has definitely been very surprising not just for me but to a lot of people out there I know for me I really thought he was a one-dimensional type of player with just his ability to shoot the ball and although that is a good trait to have and that's probably what he's going to be playing uh, whenever he does get to the league I feel like he's definitely surprised a lot of people with just doing other things while on the floor rebounding the ball and just his ability to just finish around the rim you can see here in his last four to five games he's actually grabbed over 10 rebounds um, in his last four to five and for the season he's averaging around 13 points a game five rebounds rebounds on 45 percent shooting from the field and close to 40 from three right now he is projected to go somewhere in the 25 to 30s but for this season I personally would give him somewhere like a B or a B plus now Elliot Cadeau was a player that actually reclassified from the 24 class to the 23 class to start hooping at UNC and I know a lot of people had mixed opinions about this decision but I feel like Elliot Cadeau so far has shown that he can be one of the best floor generals specifically I'm um, in college this season now that's not me saying that he's had the most outrageous or the most impactful season as a freshman but I don't think he's having the worst freshman season right now he is playing for a top five team in the nation sharing the backcourt with RJ Davis who's one of the best and most prolific scorers in the nation at UNC and I do think that's kind of hindered um, Elliot Cadeau's ability to just be effective when it comes to scoring the ball but despite that and just everything 
everything that we have seen from this man, Elliot Cadeau, so far this season, I really don't think he is ready for the league, nor do I think a team will even give him an opportunity to get drafted in this up and coming draft. So I do anticipate Elliot Cadeau coming back for a second season, but I do think his main things that he does need to improve on is definitely his shot making ability, his ability to score on all three levels, his confidence when it comes to shooting the ball, and also just being a little bit more selfish. I do think he can be too passive at times, but so far this season, I'll definitely give Elliot Cadeau a B minus or C plus uh, so far this season. Obviously, Reed Shepard has been one of the best freshmen in the nation, hands down, this season. I mean, you guys know, bro. I've been making plenty of Kentucky videos on this channel, so you guys already know um, how I feel. But like I said, he's definitely been one of the players that's been one of the most surprising uh, this season. I feel like out of all the top freshmen that Kentucky uh, managed to garner this season, I feel like he was a player that a lot of people just completely wrote off and a lot of people even forgot about him coming into Kentucky. But I do think that he's actually used that as motivation and he's easily been a top three freshman, top two freshman um, in the nation. And now he's actually projected to go somewhere in the lottery in this and coming draft. In my opinion, he definitely has a game that I know is going to translate seamlessly to the NBA. And if Reed Shepard can just continue to shoot the rock, play hard defensively, and just improve on his overall decision making, I definitely do think he can be a great NBA player. Um, but so far this season, I'll definitely give him an A so far. Now, I'm going to put Aaron Bradshaw, Big Z, and Justin Edwards all in the same tier, in the same realm here. I definitely think that all three of these guys um, has definitely been a little bit underwhelming so far this season. Obviously, Aaron Bradshaw and Justin Edwards, those were two guys that actually finished top five in their class and I've seen a lot of mock drafts at the beginning of the season that actually had these two guys uh, to go one and two in most of these NBA drafts however I would definitely say it's been the complete opposite I feel like Justin Edwards he's definitely had a lot of opportunities he's been giving the minutes but he just hasn't shown that he can just be effective in a half court setting and I know Aaron Bradshaw and Big Z they actually started their season pretty late but I feel like they just haven't learned to play well in rotations just also learning to play without fouling on the defense to side of the ball but all three of these guys definitely had their highs they're definitely had their lows as well but i do think all three of these guys will still declare for the draft this season and i do think they'll probably all go somewhere in the second round now aiden holloway has always been one of the more popular players in this class he was known to have one of the best layup packages and also just playing alongside robert dillingham for most of his career but during his time at auburn he definitely got off to a hot start averaging over 12 uh, points a game in his first five games but i feel like since then and just during the midway point of this season it's just been the complete opposite and he just hasn't been able to find his groove uh, especially at Auburn I mean if you just look at the numbers he just hasn't been able to just shoot the ball at any level of the floor and he's only shooting just 30 percent from the field and also from three and you guys know bro this was supposed to be his main attribute as a player and I do think he still made a huge impact especially for Auburn this season definitely bringing a different level of energy to the team but you know if Auburn is going to make a run in the March Madness tournament I personally do think that Aiden Holloway is definitely going to have to step up his game but so far this season I'll definitely give him a C minus now Robert Dillingham in my personal opinion has easily been the best freshman so far this season if you guys remember Robert Dillingham actually came in as a projected undrafted uh, player in this coming draft but now he's actually considered to be in the conversation as the number one pick in this draft you guys know right he's shifty he's unguardable he can score at all three levels he's an underrated uh, playmaker as well especially in transition and also in the half court setting and I definitely do think he's been a huge reason as to why Kentucky has been the team that they have been this season and in a system like Kentucky and just playing for coach Cal it doesn't really come easy and it doesn't really allow Rob to be Rob like the Rob that we think and the scoring threat that we know he can be but the fact that he still managed to showcase what he can do and also be efficient as well like I said easily been one of the best freshmen this season and I'll definitely give him an A a plus, whatever you want to call it. Now, Bronny James just hasn't been the player that I feel like most people anticipated that he was going to be. We obviously cannot deny the fact that he was going through some health issues before the season even started, and he actually started his season uh, pretty late. So we definitely had to give him some time. But before this man, Bronny James, we're about over 10 to 15 games so far into the season. And I think we can definitely all agree that the G he just hasn't been the player that most people thought that he was going to be. I'm really not surprised. I mean, you guys know I've been covering this man, Bronny James, so 
far for the majority of his career. And he's always been a guy that's been great defensively. He can make impact in multiple ways, but the scoring and just his aggressiveness on that side of the ball just hasn't been, you know, what people thought. I personally just think that the team that he's on is really not best for his development. It's not really catered for him to really be successful, at least in my personal opinion. But nonetheless, if we're going to talk about individually, just how he's played, I mean, if you just look at the numbers, it's just been pretty underwhelming. And believe it or not, most people actually still think that he's going to get drafted, but it's mainly due to the fact that he is LeBron James's son. But just as a player, I do think he's a guy that definitely needs more than three plus years to actually develop to be the player that most people think he can be. But, you know, obviously the politics, I know LeBron wants to play with Bronny and whatnot, but like I said, it just hasn't been the season that most people anticipated for Bronny, but I'll probably drop a separate video uh, for Bronny since I know you guys want to see that. But, but yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I really want to know your opinions on who do you guys feel like has been the best freshman, who's been the worst freshman, who's been the most surprising, who's been the most underwhelming. Comment down below. I appreciate you guys for helping me reach 30k don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel share the video do all that see you guys in the next one peace